hello to you I thought I'd do this next video with Archie and it is about talking about feeding your snake because I know it is kind of a big thing to many many people when they get their snake home and it doesn't actually eat for them so I'm going to offer Archie oh, just something to climb on to come out because I know he's been wanting out for a little while now and actually he wanted out last night and he was due for a feed but he was so not not interested in it and I don't think he's going to well he might slowly come down on this thing um, but in the meantime uh, he didn't eat and am I worried? No, I'm not. I've known Archie to go off his meals at certain time of the year. And why I say keep a journal? Because you can look back on it and say to yourself, oh, well, this happened roughly around this time of the year last year. So maybe that's pretty normal for him to be doing. Now what he does, if he doesn't want his meal, is he actually attacks it. He doesn't bite it and hang on to it, he just attacks this thing. I'm going to, oh, actually holding that up one handed is not exactly the best for me. So I will lift him and try and get him to uh, venture on down on my arm. Might be a good thing at this particular point and then uh maybe come on arch like honestly dude i will offer you this first you might you might climb down on that yeah these these little things um you know i will be showing you as time goes on on things that can actually help your snake um, to come on out without you physically getting them out but we're talking about problem feeders and I really as a little one Archie was very very outgoing a very good eater as a little one but I also got him after he'd had you know several meals so I knew that he was well established and that is something that is important that you do if you are a beginner especially to understand getting a snake that is not a problem feeder has had multiple feeds then you know they are eating so that if you get them home and you offer a meal and they don't want it don't don't go into a panic about it because it's just them settling in and they do need time to settle in. But I do recommend once you've got them home and they've been settled in for a few hours and it's later in the day, give them a feed. Now people often ask, what time of the day should I feed my snake? In all honesty, my snakes feed at any time of the day they they don't really care if they're hungry they're going to eat but remember many snakes are nocturnal so it's really in their mind to be feeding and hunting in the night and our lighting is um not great up there archie you know can you please come on down dude i haven't got the lighting going up here so yeah don't don't panic just give them time to settle in they will eat when they're hungry of course if you've you've got yourself a snake that hasn't been eating then you you're already well aware that you are going to be asking yourself well first of all you would ask yourself why isn't that snake eating what is going on and as somebody that has had snakes before is there something wrong with the snake do they have a respiratory infection are they not comfortable in their surroundings 
where they are. Um, this is little Archie, my um, rough scale python. He's a Moralia, but he's not a carpet python. But he's one of our beautiful species here in Australia, I believe. Um, I think they are just amazing snakes. They don't get too big, but as you can see, Archie is quite long. He is starting to fill out, but Archie has a habit and what we're going to be talking about today is um, feeding. And you'll blur the camera if you keep coming headlong into it. So I'll have to do kind of his body a bit here. Um, but I'm not talking about rough scale pythons, although I really do not understand why more people don't have them. Um, I think they are one beautiful species. We are talking about feeding our snakes. And I know that can be a really huge thing to many people uh, when they get their snake home. Is it going to eat? Am I going to get it to eat? What if it doesn't eat? What do I do if it doesn't eat? Now, in all honesty, when you've gone and got your snake, it's, it's got to be, for me, if you're a beginner especially, that that snake has had several meals, at least five meals in their belly because then you know they are established, they know what they're doing. You do know that some snakes are born and they do not know how to eat. They, they don't know the process and a lot just come out knowing exactly what to do and unfortunately out in the wild those ones that do not know what to do, of course, would not survive. But they come into our world and we as humans will do everything and anything that we can to get them to eat. Now, those ones that don't eat, uh, you know, the ones that are eating, let's just say you get them home. As I've said, offer them a meal when they've been home for a few hours and been settled in. Wait till later in the day um, and offer them the meal. When, when's the best time to feed your snake? When they're well established and they're doing wonderful and they're feeding regularly, it doesn't really matter, n even though they're nocturnal. Okay, they are nocturnal. So, yes, feed them at night because then they are definitely those problem feeders, especially feed them late in the night because that is when they're more likely to take a meal than during the day. So that's one way of maybe a problem feeder and actually getting them to eat. Some are very shy and are actually afraid of the prey. You know, you putting it in there and jiggling it and all the rest of it, it, it may actually scare them more than anything. So put it down and let them... Put it down close to them. A lot, of course, will be in their hide anyway. If they're a little bit scaredy cats, you could say. Put it out the front of their hide and leave it and walk away. And you go back after a few hours and you might find that prey item to be gone. You need to give your time, your snake time, especially if it's a little bit afraid and it's just settling in, to settle in and get its bearings and start to feel safe. And then it will probably start to feed anyway. But you may come across a snake that has just never eaten. And as a beginner, I would say, don't even take that snake. Please don't take that snake. Even though your heart goes out and you think you can probably get it feeding, and you might. But you'll be broken hearted if you don't get it to eat. Now they can live without food for 10, 11 weeks. So, you know, there's plenty of time for them to decide that they will eat. But as I said, some just don't know how to do it. So what are you going to do? For more experienced people, of course, we assist feed them. 
and I have tried that and done that and I was doing that with a tiny little anteresia and there's no way even a pinky little mouse she could she could eat it was too big so you know it's chopping off a tail putting a tail down their belly I eventually took my girl and had her force fed but I had it done by a vet there's no way I could stick a tube down her little head and her little throat she was half the size of a pencil and her head was the size of my pinky nail so so fragile some of them are why definitely get one that is well established with their feeding hey Archie you were but right now Archie isn't eating and Archie does this on me he's by the looks of him um, coming into shed and with the rough scales their belly goes a little bit yellow you could say and they get that purpley tinge pinkish I guess you could say it is but you may not be able to see it um, of course with the camera but I'll put it down to that Archie sees his food at the moment and all he wants to do is kill it even though it's already not alive you could say so I know instantly that he isn't interested in eating anything the next thing is what size feeder and I've always said go by the size of their girth but I'm even a little bit more inclined I'm trying to get Archie to come back because he's way 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 over my shoulder and he oh Archie of course may not feed because he is starting into his shed cycle his head goes rather dark but the rest of him will darken but it darkens in a funny his brown goes really dark but his lines go that that purplish pinkish hue I love you too darling I really do and I know you love me because you can climb on me can't you he says well why aren't you letting me because I'm doing a video dude of you today so I have a journal and what I know is is this is Archie and this is just the way he is so no I'm not worried about it would I be worried about a little one that has never eaten and we're coming up on that 11 12 weeks absolutely I would be worried and it doesn't mean as you know your snake is ill or there's something wrong with it and I say that lightly because we don't know if there's something wrong there could be something wrong internally and that snake just is not meant to eat I guess you could say come on dude like honestly you were the one that was wanting out and um, so I figured well you'd be a good one to film but hey you just want to go everywhere but anywhere that oh my goodness dude please please darling as you can see you know pretty easy going this guy and he always has been very social very out there very easy going snake but he still has times when he doesn't want to eat but I've learnt over the years don't stress just don't stress you stress your snake stresses the more you want them to eat the less they're likely to eat and people might scoff at that and think that is ridiculous a snake doesn't feel from you anything but they do they absolutely do so you have to be pretty chilled and pretty laid back and just do the best you can but the key is get one that's already been eating and doing very well so offer it a smaller feeder than what you were offering sometimes that works as babies 
I like to for the first six months offer them a smaller feeder and I feed them every five to seven days I like kind of five days for that first six months because your snake is growing and um, all their their innards you could say are growing and need that nutrition to do so then after six months a smaller feeder rather than one big large feeder I kind of like that I, I think it's easier on their digestive system and when I say a smaller feeder you can offer them two of the smaller feeder to make up to the size that you think that really that they should be on I'm not seeing feet singular feed them three pinky rats instead of a rat pup they're actually getting a bigger meal but as a smaller feeder in their body it's much easier on their digestive system so make sure that feeder is nice nice and warm because remember that's what they run on is their heat pits to pick up on these things so make sure that feeder is nice and warm always please be happy to go down a less size it, it is it will not hurt your snake and sometimes they don't want a big feed in their belly so from the first to the six months I do like every five to seven days smaller feeder when they get to about six months of age add an extra feeder you know it might be eating fuzzies or a rat pup at that particular stage offer them two of it but extend the time out then to the seven to ten days then by 12 months they should be just on the one feeder or they're on the two feeders but you go in a couple of weeks they will do much better on that feeding regimen than stuffing a big big feeder in their belly so problem feeders we've all had them at some point and we will all get them at some point but when you're experienced you kind of know what to do all the little tricks that you need to do and as I said you know it might be assist feeding them just so they learn how to bite and how to swallow because as I said some just do not get it they do not understand that that is what they need to do it might take a few assist feeds and there are plenty of videos on YouTube that you can see where people show you how to assist feed please do not attempt to do it if you're unsure about what you're doing and get somebody even if it is a vet to actually do this for you um, unless you're experienced please don't do it um, you can hurt the snake and you, you certainly don't want that to happen if you've tried everything else try them with a mouse try them with a rat try scenting it with a chick try scenting it even with tuna you know they they like a strong scent as well so apart from that you know i don't don't think there's much else that you can actually do like i said wait them out then go without food for 10 11 odd weeks but then, or if you see prior that they're losing weight, then of course you need to start doing something. But they're born with quite a little bit in their bellies because they've absorbed that yolk, which sustains them for quite a while. So unless you see them losing weight, it's all good. But keep in the back of your mind, some just don't know how to eat. Some don't want to eat because 
of something else that is going on with them as well. So get your snake as that has been established with their feeding so you don't have to deal with any of this. It is, it is not a wonderful experience to go through worrying if your snake is going to eat because it's not eating and it just won't eat. So, from Archie and myself and Max, who is waiting at the back door to go out, um, take care. Ciao.